Before natin i-discuss ang controlled compression and tension sections, i-define muna natin ano ang compression and tension. Okay. Compression in mechanics, compression is the application of balance in wide or pushing forces to different points on a material or structure that is forces with no net sum of torque directed so as to reduce its size in a one or more direction. So, ibig sabihin, compression is from, from the root is the word is compress. Parang pinapalit mo yung isang uh, isang material. Binibigyan mo siya ng compressive forces. Okay. Next naman is yung uh, effects of compression. When put under compression or any other types of stress, every material will suffer some deformation, even if imperceptible, that causes the average relative positions of its atoms and molecules to change. The deformation may be permanent or may be reversed when the compression forces disappear. In the latter case, the deformation gives rise to reaction forces that oppose the compression forces and may eventually balance them. So, tension naman. Tension force is the force generated when a load is applied at one or more ends of a, ends of a material in a direction, directional way, normally to the cross section of the material. A tension force is often given as a pulling force. The load being placed upon the material must be applied actually to be a tension force. The tension forces to which a component or, is, or a structure are, ex, are exposed is of major concern when selecting materials to withstand stress. Ito yung illustration ng application ng tension at saka compression. So, kung may kita natin sa isang beam, sa upward niya is yung load is downward. So, yun yung compression. Tapos, yung tension naman is yung load niya is pinupull niya palabas sa baba yung yung isang structure. So, that is tension. Sa so, mga video yung ipapakita ko, dito i-illustrate yung application ng compression and tension and also kung ano yung mga gina yung compre ano, compression test and tensile test ng isang reinforced concrete. In the last video, we talked about Concrete 101 and why concrete is such a great construction material, but I didn't mention its greatest weakness. Hey, I'm Grady, and this is Practical Engineering. On today's episode, we're continuing the series on concrete with a discussion of reinforcement. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. More on that later. To understand concrete's greatest weakness, first we need to know a little bit about mechanics of materials, which is the fancy way of saying how materials behave under stress. Stress in this case is not referring to anxiety or existential dread, but rather the internal forces of the material. There are three fundamental types of stress, compression pushing together, tension pulling apart, and shear sliding along a line or plane. And not all materials can resist each type of stress equally. It turns out that concrete is very strong in compression and weak in tension. But you don't have to take my word for it. Here's a demonstration. These two concrete cylinders were cast from the exact same batch, and we'll see just how much load they can withstand before failure. First, the compressive test. Under compression, the cylinder broke at a load of about 1,000 pounds. That's 450 kilo. For concrete, that's pretty low because I included a lot of water in this mix. The reason is my rig to test tensile strength isn't quite as sophisticated. I cast some eye bolts into the sample and now I'm hanging it from the rafters in the shop. I filled up this bucket with gravel, but it wasn't quite enough weight to fail the sample. So I added another dumbbell to push it over the edge. The weight of this bucket was only about 80 pounds or 36 kilos. That's less than 10% of the compressive strength. All this to say, you shouldn't make a rope out of concrete. In fact, without some way to fix this weakness to tensile stress, you shouldn't make any kind of structural member out of concrete, because rarely does a structural member experience just compression. In reality, almost all structures experience a mixture of stresses. That's no more apparent than in the classic beam. This particular classic beam is homemade by me out of pure concrete here in my garage. 
Applying a force on this beam causes internal stresses to develop, and here's what they look like. The top of the beam experiences compressive stress, and the bottom of the beam experiences tensile stress. You can probably guess where the failure is going to occur on this concrete beam, as I continue to increase the load. It happens almost instantly, but you can see that the crack forms on the bottom of the beam where tensile stress is highest and propagates upward until the beam fails. You see what I'm getting at here? Concrete on its own does not make a good structural material. There are just too many sources of tension that it can't resist by itself. So in most situations, we add reinforcement to improve its strength. Reinforcement within concrete creates a composite material, with the concrete providing strength against compressive stress, while the reinforcement provides strength against tensile stress. And the most common type of reinforcement used in concrete is deformed steel, more commonly known as rebar. I made a new beam with a couple of steel threaded rods cast into the lower portion of the concrete. These threads should act just like the deformed ridges in normal rebar to create some grit between the concrete and steel. Under the press, the first thing you notice is that this beam is much stronger than the previous one. We're already well above the force that failed the unreinforced sample. But the second thing you notice is that the failure happens a little bit slower. You can easily see the crack forming and propagating before the beam fails. This is actually a very important part of reinforcing concrete with steel. It changes the type of failure from a brittle mode, where there's no warning that anything is wrong, to a ductile mode, where you can see the cracks forming before a complete loss of strength. This gives you a chance to recognize a potential catastrophe and hopefully address it before it occurs. Rebar works great for most reinforcement situations. It's relatively cheap, well-tested, and understood. But it does have a few disadvantages, one of the major ones being that it is a passive reinforcement. Steel lengthens with stress, so rebar can't start working to help resist tension until it's had a chance to stretch out. Often that means that concrete has to crack before the rebar can take up any of the tensile stress of the member. Cracking of concrete isn't necessarily bad. After all, we're only asking the concrete to resist compressive forces, which it can do just fine with cracks. But there are some cases where you want to avoid cracks, or the excessive deflection that can come from passive rebar. For those cases, you might consider going to an active reinforcement, also known as pre-stress concrete. Pre-stressing means applying a stress to the reinforcement before the concrete is placed into service. One way to do this is to put tension on the steel reinforcement tendons as the concrete is cast. Once the concrete cures, the tension will remain inside, transferring a compressive stress to the concrete through friction with the reinforcement. Most concrete bridge beams are pre-stressed in this way. Check out all that reinforcement at the bottom of this beam. Another way to pre-stress reinforcement is called post-tensioning. In this method, the stress in the reinforcement is developed after the concrete is cured. For this next sample, I cast plastic sleeves into the concrete. The steel rods can slide smoothly in these sleeves. Once the beam cured, I tighten nuts onto the rods to tension them. Under the press, this beam wasn't any stronger than the conventionally reinforced beam, but it did take more pressure before the cracks formed. Also, this one wasn't quite as dramatic because instead of failing the actual steel rods, it was the threads on the nuts that failed first. I hope these demonstrations help show why reinforcement is necessary in most applications of concrete, to add tensile strength and to change the failure mode from brittle to ductile. Just like the last video, I'm just scratching the surface of a very complicated and detailed topic. Many engineers spend their entire careers studying and designing reinforced concrete structures. But I'm having some fun playing with concrete, and I hope you're finding it interesting. I'd love to continue this series on concrete, so if you have any questions on the topic, post them in the comments below. Maybe I can answer them in the next video. Thank you for watching, and let me know what you think. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring. Yung strain ng concrete natin is denoted by this epsilon subscript C before the tensile still yield. So take note of this one. Huh?
yung difference niya ng balance section is at the same time yung uh, pag-fail ng uh, inside steel section at saka yung concrete has just reached its uh, 0.003 na strain no? but dito sa compression is ang concrete muna no ang concrete muna has just reached its strain no of uh, 0.003 meaning nag-fail muna yung concrete fiber natin before nag-fail itong tinsile steel natin okay so the concrete has just failed first before the tinsile steel yields so ito yung kaibahan dito sa compression control take note kung compression control siya meaning ang concrete mo ay nag-fail muna bago yung steel okay just as simple as that and next the beam will suddenly fail also like in the balance sections without giving a warning no? so halos magkapare-pareha siya sa balance section no? na magpe-fail siya without giving uh, giving us or the user uh, some warnings no? at saka delikado ang design na ito at saka as the load is increased the deflection is again usually not noticeable also just like the balance section and failure will occur without warning of users of the structure okay. and this kind of a member must be avoided no, in designing a concrete beam okay. and this kind of a member is also referred to as a brittle member okay. Kung brittle siya is uh, magpe-fail siya sa atin din, no? Hindi tulad kung ductile siya. So, meron siyang ductility na hindi siya uh, magpe-fail sa atin din, no? Kasi ductile siya. But dito is, ang compression control section is to consider siya as a brittle member. Okay? So, take note of this one. At saka itong uh, member na to has this tensile steel strain, no? Uh, denoted by this epsilon t less than or equal to 0 0.002 so as what I've said no, doon sa balance section is ang tensile strain nya is 0 0.002 but ito naman compression control section natin is pwede siyang magiging 0 0.002 or below this strain na 0 0.002 considered siya as compression control section okay at ngayon doon tayo sa tension control sections so ito yung simple introduction niya the beam or the tensile steel has just yield no? before the concrete fiber has reached its strain of 0.003 so kung makikita niyo yung kaibahan doon sa compression uh, doon sa balance section pala is ang um, concrete at ang steel mo ay nag siya at the same time no? simultaneously at doon naman sa compression control section nag-fail muna yung concrete niya bago nag-fail yung uh, steel niya kaya sa tinatawag na compression control no? nag-fail muna yung concrete bago yung steel but itong tension control or tension control section nag-fail muna yung steel niya bago nag-fail yung concrete niya. So, ito yung kaibahan. Kaya siya tinatawag na tension control kasi nag-fail nag muna yung tension steel niya bago nag-fail o nag-reach ng strain of 0.003 ang concrete fiber natin. Okay? So, yun ang kaibahan ng balance section, uh, compression control section, at saka yung tension control section so try to remember those no because uh, this will be very helpful no pag doon na tayo sa application ng uh, problem okay and the beam will not suddenly fail take note of this one the beam will not suddenly fail giving users a warning of impending failure no? so maganda ang design kung uh, nabilong siya dito sa tension control no? kasi nagbibigay pa siya ng warning bago mag-fail yung beam maybe through cracks no? cracks from the bottom and it will suddenly reaches no, into the 
neutral axis or into the top fiber bago sa ma total pain so it's a good design no kung under sa sa tension control section and the most preferable section no than the balance and compression control section so ito yung tension control section and this kind of a member as a tensile strain denoted by this epsilon t greater than or equal now to 0.005 so take note of this no because uh, ma mahalagang maintindihan natin no yung mga boundaries at sa kalimitasyon ng ng strain ng ng every section natin kung balance section siya is ang tensile strain natin is 0.002 kung sa 